If your life is not organized, and your life being everything around you, because it takes one little fucked up piece of an outside interference to clutter your whole mind. Your mind has to always be clear. Who's gonna carry the boats? You have to be your own motivator, your own coach, your own, your own trainer, your own everything. So to do that, you have to come into work and work is whatever your work may be, ready to go. And what that means is you may have failed miserably yesterday, but you come to work like, be like, man, you just lost everything. How the hell are you just fucking damn motivated? Because this is what it takes. This is what the fuck it takes. And you got to get it from wherever you can. Whether you make up this illusion of your life or this false reality that gets you motivated, whatever gets you motivated, it's got to be here at the tip of your brain at all times. I believe everybody should live their life. So everything that someone says in life, take it with a grain of salt. Take what they give and don't be like, oh, David Goggins said this or whoever said this. No, do not take what I say and do exactly what I say. So for me, what makes me who I am, because my mission is very different than yours or anybody else's. I have to go into a situation knowing, okay, I'm a guy who wants to make people better. For people to get better, I have to continuously get better myself. For me to do that, I can't just say, oh, I have this resume, the resume is there forever, I'm good. I have to cap my success because for me to help people out, I can't just say I did it once and I'm good. I have to continue to reinvent the wheel of the mind. Even some of the most trained people in the world fall back on that. It's easy to talk about. Like I said, when you go through it once, it's a perishable skill. Hardness, mental hardening, mental toughness, it's a perishable skill. Just because you went through some training once and you got through it, doesn't mean it lasts fucking forever. And that's where most people hated me in my life because I realized that. You don't just say, oh, I got it, I'm checked off, I'm good for the rest of my life. That's why you have to recall. You recall on fucking everything. And you definitely must recall when it comes to the mind. That is one of the biggest requalifications you must have. And when you're at that level, you got to recall every fucking day, not once a year. What do you think most people get wrong about motivation? They think it's a permanent fix. They think it's something that, that is a constant. They think that maybe once I get it, I'm going to hold on to it. And that's the thing about that I was telling you, that I always talk about. It's nothing is permanent. Nothing is permanent. And a lot of times you have to learn to perform without motivation. You have to learn to perform without purpose. You have to learn to perform a lot of different things. And that's what people think. They think I need to have this motivation to work out, to study, to be better. So if they don't have it, they just don't fucking do it. And that's where you fail. You have to learn to train your mind well beyond motivation. If you have motivation, that's great. That's some kindling to the fire. All it takes is a little bit of fucking spark. You can burn the whole forest up. But motivation, you have to learn to exist without it. And discipline is good too. But without a clear headspace, there's no discipline. Let's say we have a circuit breaker. Okay? And I'm loading everything up to one fucking circuit. Just load it up. It's going to fucking blow. And once that thing blows, man, the circuit's all fucked up. You got to have each thing plugged into the right spot. Like a fucking crowded garage. You can't put anything in it. Once your brain is crowded, discipline is great. Motivation is great. But if you can't fit shit in your brain because it's all fucking cluttered with shit, there's no discipline. You may have it sometimes when it fits in that crowded garage of your mind. I call it mental zones. Basically, is you're organizing your mind so you can put that discipline. So a lot of people talk about discipline. Okay, great. Why do you fall off the fucking wagon? Why can't I continue with this routine? Going to the gym, being better, waking up early, eating the right foods. It's because maybe it's your kids, maybe it's your wife, maybe it's your job. And it's all just stuffed in your fucking brain. You don't have it compartmentalized and organized in these nice shelves. Like you look in a garage, it's all fucking a nice organized militant garage. Hey, where are my dumbbells? Right there. A lot of people whose brain, hey, where's my dumbbells? Uh, let me look. 
They're fucking throwing shit. They're looking through totes. They're all fucked up. So where am I going to put discipline in that mind if I can't find other shit? You got to be able to find all these different things in your mind. Oh, I can put discipline right there. I can put consistency right there. I can put all these things right there in that spot. So that's what I'm talking about. If you wake up in the morning and you don't want to do something, you don't care enough about yourself. And that's what you need to really research is, man, why am I not doing this for myself? Because that is, that is the number one purpose in life is to better oneself. So that's the only purpose I fucking need. I know there's so many people that have the ability and just refuse to get off that couch. Refuse to study a few more hours. Refuse to go deeper, to go further. And that's where I gain the advantage. It's so easy to be great nowadays, my friend, because most people are weak. Most people don't want to go to that extra mile. Most people don't want to find that extra because it sucks. It's miserable. It's lonely. You talk about that you were kind of you know lonely by yourself. I was the same way. And that used to hurt me growing up. Now I fucking thrive in that shit. That's the only place to be. You have to want it. You have to want to be better. And it starts off with you have to have pride in yourself. You, you have to have pride in yourself. You have to have, there's something about you, whether it's your last name, whether it's just the smallest thing, you have to be proud of yourself. And if you have no pride in yourself, I can't give it to you. I had big dreams. A lot of us have big dreams, big goals. And when you have goals that are maybe outside your reach, you have to know that getting to that goal, you're going to have a lot of bad days, a lot of setbacks. When I was losing 106 pounds in three months, the first two months or the first two weeks, I was gaining weight. I would lose a pound, gain two. So I was just failing. I kept failing and kept failing and kept failing. So I had to teach myself how to fail right. And what that means is when I fail, I can't spend much time in that fail zone. I have to be able to get up and get after the next day just as fast because my goals were just, you know, to be a Navy SEAL. I don't have time to stay here and feel bad for myself for weeks and months and years because I'll lose that time. So the big thing is know that if you have big goals and big dreams, along the way failure is going to happen. So how fast do you get up from that? And you got to teach yourself that. But the biggest key to success in anything you do is you got to have an unlimited supply of fucking fuck you. There's a lot of programs that have are 30 days. Mm-hmm. And 30 day programs are good, but it's kind of a hack because while they say it takes three weeks to develop a habit or some, it's always this hacky shit. I'm gonna tell you right now, 30 days ain't gonna do shit for you. The permanent, you wanna make it permanent. You start talking about a year, 18 months, two years, that's a sacrifice. And when you commit yourself to something for a year, you're not gonna say, oh, I'm gonna let that go. Because in your mind, you, you, you have it clear as day. That year took a lot out of me. That year built me. That year started to scrape away all that scar tissue, started to clean me up. 30 days doesn't clean shit up. 30 days just kind of covers up, put a blanket over it, putting a rug over it. A year, it cleans you up nicely, man. Whatever your problem is, if, if you can dedicate yourself for a year to something, you could be a changed person. My first question was, okay, what are you willing to give up? What are you willing to sacrifice? What are you willing to forgo? Because a lot of people, like this guy came in one time, I was a, a trainer. And he goes, man, I can stop doing anything but my frappuccinos. I go fucking leave. Because I'm looking for that person like me. People, people, it's hard for people to understand how I lost 106 pounds in less than three months. I sat down at the table and I said to myself, what are you willing to give up? Everything. And when people come to me with that kind of ma- mindset, I can work with you. When you are willing to strip yourself down to nothing and give everything, that's who I want to work with. Because now I can mold you into exactly who you want to be. What happens is you have all these voices that are telling you you're fucked up and this is going to be hard. But for some reason, you put so much practice into you that you can ignore every one of them that are telling you you're not going to fucking make it and still be able to fucking make it because you have put the practice in that you know 
this is the process. It's such a daunting task that all the voices are saying no. But you still have the conviction that I know I can do this. And that's what it took for me to get here 20, 30 years ago. I had this, so 25 years ago, pipe dream. And ever since then, every voice was like, you're a fucking nut. But when you put that practice in, every day you lace them up. And I don't mean run. It's just a metaphor for life. When you lace them motherfuckers up every day. Pretty soon you win. Pretty soon you'll fucking win. The threatened, unprepared, weaker opponent will never talk shit until they think they found a chink in your fucking armor. See, yesterday, I put up a video of my leg and the surgery I just had. Oh, so I got a flood of people running their fucking mouths. Talking about, I'm coming for you Goggins. Motherfucker, I've been doing this shit for 30 fucking years. You think you fucking know me. You clearly don't know me, son. See, one thing about a fucking savage, when a savage is fucking wounded, that is when he is the most fucking dangerous. You talk about performance without a purpose. Mm -hmm. What's that? So, let's say you have no races. Let's say you have no classes, no nothing. You have, there's no purpose in your life. You know, people need to have purpose to get up. They need purpose to perform. You need to get to a point in your life where there's nothing on the docket. There is no 5K. There's no, um, I'm going to get into school to be this or that and still perform to the highest level. Because what people don't get is one day that thing's going to come up. And if you're not constantly performing without purpose, you're not going to be ready when the time comes. It's this magical thing, purpose that we're all looking for. But what's funny about it all is that we need these things to perform. But we don't take a second to realize the purpose is always there. The purpose never leaves us because the very purpose is you. We are training kids and people to be soft in a world that continuously gets harder and it doesn't it doesn't correlate like that guy talking about the tear gas with the seals is that necessary i don't know but what is necessary is you have to build a person that can withstand the pressures of whatever they're going to be dealing with in life and we don't do that this isn't for the masses this is for those who are leaving normal behind those who are in search of a new realm it's a lonely journey. You're isolated. Those who used to keep pace with you will fall off. They'll see where their world ends and yours begins. Your ability to suffer, endure, outwork must be greater. You must be willing to extend yourself to the limit with no guarantee of success. Every day, you must ask yourself, did I do enough? It's that pride that wakes you up. And I'm not talking about bad pride. The, the attention to detail for the human being I want to do. I call this thing, like, I want to be the standard. I want to be that guy. Like, every place I went in the military, there was this ethos about how this place is, how we're going to live, how we're going to represent ourselves. And I walked around, and I saw that most people didn't live up to that ethos. Like, if you go to whatever, whatever company, they, they have this mission statement on how we want to run our company. I made one for myself on how I want to be. And that is why if people can make up a mission statement, an ethos in which they want to live by, and every morning you wake up, you hold yourself accountable to that mission. Not a company, it's your own. Make up your own mission statement. What do you want to be in life? Everything in life comes down to this. I'm telling you right now, no matter how hard you train, how hard you go out there and run and swim and lift weights, whatever the fuck you're doing to get in shape, it always comes down to this. Because we, we, when you're training and your mind is all jacked up, all you are is a bigger, faster, stronger quitter. That's what it comes down to. I've had the opportunity to work with a few athletes, and some athletes are praised and some aren't. We all want to be loved, cared for, appreciated, all that shit. And when we're not, it becomes a poison in our fucking minds. It starts to really infect us like a, like, like a damn cancer. I work with this one athlete, and every day he'd wake up, look at Instagram, look at the damn TV, look everywhere. They were always hating on him, wanting him to lose, picking him to lose. And it started to bother him. And before the big day, he came to me and goes, hey man, Goggins, I can't 
get this shit out of my fucking head, man. I don't want to fight. I've trained hard. My mind's not in it. I said, you're looking at this shit all wrong, brother. All these people want to take your fucking heart. You're going against this opponent. Not only are you going against this opponent, you're going against all of these haters. So are you want this motherfucker to take your heart? You need to know one thing. You have the opportunity to take every motherfucker's soul. Some of these motivational people out here, it's, it's the funniest thing in the world to me. They'll go and say, when you wake up in the morning, pound your chest. You know, fucking look at yourself in the mirror and do all this fucking bullshit. I hope it works. What works for me is that everyday resume. The things I know I've accomplished, the things I know I've done. Real hard work. The real calluses on my mind. The real calluses on my hands. That's it. The, you don't need to pound your chest in the mirror the fuck anymore if you have that. I believe that you have to build belief. Belief is like, there's an after school special belief where the mom says, believe in yourself. And that's all great. But there's also a built belief. And the built belief is one where you are constantly, like for me, I came from a bad place. How I build belief is through the, the daunting tasks I put myself through. So that's proof positive that I can. So it correlates. And that's how this piece of shit kid that I once thought I was built belief by saying, hmm, I was in three hell weeks. I went to ranger school. I tried out for Delta Selection. Undeniable stack of proof. That is proof, motherfucker. So whenever you think, whenever you think you can't, confidence comes from the thing that you built. So what's the great divide of human beings? Who are you on those days you don't want to do things? It's easy to conquer when it's good weather. You got good sleep. Work's going good. The family's good. You feel great. Your body's not injured. Those are the easy days to conquer. But who are you on those fucking days when all hell's broke loose? Your body's fucked up. You're sore. You're depressed. You're miserable. You're not the favorite person at school. You might be getting bullied. You might be falling behind in life. Who are you on those days when shit's all fucked up? That's the great divide. Those people who get up on those days when everything's fucked up and still grind, that's the separator right there. Stay hard. How do I keep from quitting? Just so you know, man, there's a start line to quit. And usually that start line, it starts when people show up to any endeavor being out of shape, not in the best shape of their lives. Have you ever seen a fighter and the guy that he's fighting is in real good shape, and the other person looks gassed? He only has one thought in his mind, and that's quitting. That's all he has. Being out of shape, it limits all of your fucking options. So showing up to any endeavor in the best shape of your life, what that does is it opens up all of your fucking options. And the biggest option that it gives me when I show up that way is, all right, I'm in the best shape of my life. How can I get the body-mind connection going better for me? People don't know how to turn their minds on. People don't know about this bolts and logs, why I say it, why I start yelling. I'm trying to activate something. I'm trying to activate passion, want, hunger, the dog, the savage. That motherfucker is falling asleep. When I show up knowing I'm in the great shape, I can wake that savage beast up. You gotta learn yourself, know, it, know how to wake yourself up, but if you don't show up in the best shape of your life, your mind is worthless to you, so your savage is fucking dead. It takes nothing to be a loser. And that's why I hold most people to a higher standard because I know how little it takes, like little ability. Like you need no talent, you need no greatness inside of you, and you can still be a bad motherfucker. I was in going through Navy SEAL trainers. One thing I told myself, I wanted to quit every single day, but many dreams die while suffering. And many of us out here have suffered. And when you're suffering, I'm not talking about just physically. I'm talking about emotionally, spiritually. It could be a relationship. When you're suffering, you give up on the very things that you wanted the most. When I was going through pararescue, I wanted to be a pararescue man so bad. But that water haunted me. So when the suffering got too much, my dream died. And pretty much, I almost died with it. If I didn't find Navy SEALs and getting past that hump and overcoming my demons and facing my demons every day, I would have never been up here today. You can't outrun your demons. They'll always know where you're hiding. Trust me at that. 
And I'm going to end with this. Don't stop when you're tired. Stop when you're done. You can't read somebody else's book about some theory on how to do shit. Some guy who sat up in their nice warm office and, read, and, and wrote some book with a nice cup of coffee in the fucking hand. No. I want to see that guy who put, immersed himself in fucking hell. And he thought about quitting and leaving and, and his wife and his kids. And why am I here? Is, this, is it worth it? All this crazy shit is still said and found out a way to get through it. So basically, that's, that, that's the bottom line of it all. We all want to read about how we can quickly get somewhere. That's why the six minute abs and all sorts of shit so powerful. You may get some results from it, but they're not permanent. The permanent result comes from you fucking, I say it all the time, you have to suffer. You have to make that a tattoo on your fucking brain. So when that hard time comes again, you don't forget it. Don't always look to be led. And when times are fucking disgustingly hard, that's when that's what I learned I learned it's when it's, it's those times when even the hardest motherfuckers in the world are looking around for guidance it's that one mother it's that one motherfucker be that one motherfucker be that one motherfucker yeah. when, when, when even you're saying to yourself boy this fucking sucks I don't want to fucking be here right now and you're looking at all the guys eyes around you and you've seen it the eyes just go down like fuck man we're getting the fuck out of here this is brutal be that guy who finds the fucking courage to say, you know what, man, let's do this. When I was in the military, I went to this school. It was all about projects. They give you a wheelbarrow with five people, but the wheelbarrow had no wheel. They give you big ass cinder blocks, two by fours. And you had to get all that shit from point A to point B at one carry. It was you to get creative. When I was born, I was born with all kind of heart issues, lung issues bone issues, so I had to get creative. I didn't have a lot to work with. A lot of you use that as a fucking excuse. You don't have a lot to work with. So you wanna die all preserved. Make sure you die being used up. Find out what you have and get maximum potential out of that motherfucker. A good human being doesn't need to do that. A fulfilled human being doesn't need to break anyone down. All they do is want to build you up. So anybody you meet that calls you out of your name, that bullies you, that messes you up, that, that makes you feel not lifted, they are dealing with something deep-rooted. Yeah, you have to have a tough tone with some people to help them out. There's a difference. You have to be hard. I'm hard on people, but it comes from a good place. You want to be the baddest motherfucker ever at what you do? You could be misunderstood by everybody. Because you're going to be so fucking obsessed and so driven to get there. That's what it takes. That's the truth. It takes every second of your fucking life. Anybody says balance? Yeah, balance is important for a lot of fucking people. It is. But if you want to fucking go to that edge where people do not like you, don't understand you, question everything you fucking do, you, you've you arrived. When you are misunderstood to the point where fucking people think you're psycho and you're nuts and you're this and that. Why are you in the fucking gym at 1 o'clock in the fucking morning? You just got to doing an op for fucking 13, 14 hours. At the ranger school, man, at the gym. What's wrong? You will never understand what is wrong with me. And that's why I'm so fucking glad you don't. A real person, a real alpha, a real go-getter, they ain't saying shit about nobody. Correct. That's why you will never, ever hear me dropping somebody's name, running my mouth about somebody. I don't know what you went through. I don't know what you're going through. I didn't wear the shoes you wore when you were a kid. I didn't grow up in your fucked up house. I didn't have your fucked up family. I don't know shit about you. So guess what I do? Shut the fuck up. Because real men don't say shit. Because first of all, we're too busy trying to grind and be better. Correct. Second of all, unless we know what we know what we know, we shut our fucking mouths. But nowadays, there's not many real men who, who, who live by that creed of like, you know, if you're on social media running your fucking mouth and shit, you're just a bitch. You're, you're honestly, and that, that's not me trying to be some after school special shit. You really are a bitch. Real men ain't doing it. Real men don't care about that gossipy bullshit. Get to work, man. Always be ready. You never know when your next challenge is coming out of the blue. A lot of people need to have that special event that's down the road that gets them motivated to get ready for the next challenge. I'm telling you right now, every day in life presents the next challenge. Google David Goggins sit-up competition. I'm coming out of my hotel room 
This guy's coming out of his. I'm going to dinner with my girl. This guy challenges me to a sit up right in the middle of the damn fucking ho um, hotel hallway. The next one, 350 pound offensive lineman. I'm minding my business at a speaking gig. Challenges me to a damn arm wrestling competition. Today, I'm minding my business doing pull ups. Sitting here doing pull ups. Five, six, seven, eight on the minute. This guy wants to jump in. We get to 30 minutes. He looks at me, thinks we're almost done. We get to an hour. He says to me, how many can you do? I say, one more than you. We have two voices in our mind. And boy, I know they're fucking true. I've heard them. I hear them now. <laughs> and they're real. There's that one voice. That voice I used to love to fucking hear, that we love to hear. It's that soft motherfucker. That soft motherfucker voice that says, sleep the fuck in. It's okay. It's that coddling voice. You want to be hugged and nurtured and all that shit that says it's going to be okay. Well, there's another motherfucking voice that wakes you up in the middle of the night. It's not your girlfriend. It's not your boyfriend. It's that demon fucking voice that whispers in your fucking ear that says, get up, motherfucker. You're not fucking good enough. You got to work fucking harder. You haven't put enough time in. It's that voice you want to run away from. It's that voice you don't want to fucking hear. But guess what? It's that voice you need to fucking listen to. Stay hard. Listen to the whisper. Accountability mirror. It's exactly that. It holds you accountable for what the fuck you're doing wrong. I call it my live autopsy. Basically, it's key takeaways from your fucking life. We all know that we're not perfect. We all know that certain things make us have thin skin. Certain things make us lie. Make us feel insignificant. You know, maybe you're getting judged. Wherever the fuck it is, it's the why am I being a bitch sometimes. Why are you going, why do people go on social media and maybe troll somebody to write some disgusting, nasty shit about somebody? They don't even fucking know. What's making you do that shit? What's making you lie? What's making you cheat? What's making you steal? For me, I did a whole bunch of fucked up shit. So this mirror held me accountable, but it was myself. I had to hold myself accountable for the why am I being a bitch in certain situations. Why, when certain people say certain things, do I feel a certain way? Figure out yourself, get yourself hard. A lot of times I'll be in a 200 mile run or something like that, and I'm all jacked up. Body's broken, mind's broken, spirit's broken. I start to say, what if I can pull this off? When I first walked into the Navy SEAL recruiter's office, he looked at me and said, there's only been 35 African Americans in 70 years make it through. You know what I said to myself? What if I can be the 36th? It's the what if. I can pull off a fucking miracle. What if I can become someone that no one thinks I can be? And just that, just me talking about that, I have the hair going up on my arms because it makes me just like, what if?